Hey, I'm Ben Wilmore, and I'm going to show you how to match two areas using Lightroom Classic. In my case, I have some bricks where somebody's replaced some of the bricks. They don't quite match everything else, and I want it to perfectly blend in. So let's dive in and see how it's done. Here we go. And in this case, we're in Shamrock, Texas at this awesome Conoco station on Route 66. But it looks to me like they've replaced some of the bricks because they just don't match. So to get them to match, what I'm going to do is on the right side of my screen in the develop module of Lightroom Classic, I'm going to click on the masking icon and I'm going to tell it that I'd like to use a brush. Then with my brush, I'm going to have my flow and my density at 100 and I'm going to turn on a setting called auto mask. Auto mask is going to attempt to only get paint on what's on the center of my brush and is going to stop putting paint on anything that is radically different than that color. And that might help me not to get overspray. But I'm going to come down to this brick and I'm just going to paint across it like this. And if I get overspray, which I usually might because those other bricks are not that far off in brightness, I can take away. If I hold down the option key, that's the same as choosing a race over here on the right side of my screen. And when I have that held down, I happen to have auto mask turned off. So I can come in here and just freely paint to clean up any overspray in the surrounding area. Since this is a straight brick, it's also useful to click on one spot and hold shift and click somewhere else because that draws a straight line. And therefore, to clean up the edge of bricks, you can quite easily get rid of overspray if you'd like. Then I'm going to just try to visibly match these two areas using the sliders that I have. You might think you'd want to use exposure to control the brightness, but I'm not going to because exposure makes too big of a change. Instead, if it's a bright object, I'm going to instead adjust whites. So the moment I move this, that green overlay should disappear. And if your overlay is not green, it's probably red. All it means is you could click on this little square up here to change the color. But the moment I move the white slider, that overlay should disappear. If yours doesn't disappear when you try something similar, then you can click on these three dots and there's a choice called automatically toggle overlay. And if you have that turned off, your overlay would stay there. If you don't mind it staying there, you can just type the letter O. O toggles the overlay. The same thing is clicking this little checkbox. But I'm going to come down here and adjust my whites. And I'm just going to try to visibly get it to be similar in brightness. And I am guessing I'm going to show you in a moment how to make sure it's precise. Then I'll type O to get rid of my overlay. I'm not sure why it turned on. I'm going to adjust temperature and tint to get the color to match. We do have a control down here called hue, but that's only good for things that are already colorful. And those white bricks don't contain much color to begin with. But temperature and tint can shift the color of things that are white and gray. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to move this towards yellow until it looks somewhat like the thing on the left, the other brick and then I'll adjust the tint and I should be able to get it somewhere close to being right. But I doubt I'm going to be able to get it to be precise and that's the hard part, but it's not going to be hard once you learn the tip I'm about to show you. When you hover over your image, if you look in the upper right of your screen, you're going to find a histogram and just below the histogram are some numbers. Those numbers default to reading out red, green, and blue. That's what the RGB stands for. The problem with that is we're not working with sliders called red, green, and blue. We do have sliders like that when we're in Photoshop, like when you're at levels and curves, but we don't have anything like that when we're using a mask in Lightroom and we have these sliders. So they're of limited value, but if you go to the histogram and you press your right mouse button, you're going to get a menu. Or if you're on a Mac with only one mouse button, just control click and you'll get the same menu to appear. I'm going to choose show lab color values. And that's going to change the numbers that appear below the histogram. But remember, those numbers only appear when your mouse is on top of your picture. Now we have numbers for L, A, and B. And those might not mean anything to you, but they're very useful when it comes to making an adjustment such as this one. The letter L stands for luminosity. Luminosity is just a fancy word for brightness. 
So if we want to make sure the brightness is the same on these two bricks, all I need to do is move my mouse on the reference brick, the brick I'm trying to match. Move it around a little bit like this because it varies in brightness and stare at the number for L under the histogram while I do that. And I see that in general, it's in the upper 73s into the lower 74s. If I stay in the middle of the brick, that is. Then I move my mouse on top of the brick. We're changing and I see if it's the same thing. And I notice it's not. We're instead 70 to 71. Whereas over here, it was 73 to 74. So our brightness is off a bit. In order to adjust it, the problem is when I come down here to adjust my whites, which is a slider that was affecting the brightness, uh, those numbers don't show up. So in order to adjust the whites while I see those numbers, instead of moving the slider, I'm going to click on the number to the right that tells me what it's currently set to. Because when that's selected, I can use the up and down arrow keys to change the number. Then I can come up here and I can remind myself that over here, this was in the upper 73s to lower 74s. I come over here and I see it um, needs to go higher. So I'm going to use my arrow keys here and I'm using the up arrow key. And as I do, we're adjusting the whites and I'm getting it to the 73s to 74s. That means the brightness is about right. Now I'm moving my mouse around like this because both of this brick here varies in brightness. So I don't want to think about just one spot. And the other thing is when you use the arrow keys on these adjustment sliders, those numbers kind of freeze unless you move your mouse. So it's a dual advantage to move your mouse while you're looking at them, even though they jump around, but we're trying to get the general number to look right. Now let's get the color to be more close to matching. And to do that, we're going to use the readouts for A and B that are underneath the histogram. What do they relate to? Well, A and B relate to temperature and tint, but they don't relate in order. A actually relates to tint and B relates to temp. It's just the opposite order here than what they show up here. So I'm going to click on one of these two numbers. I'm going to click on this number for tint. Tint is the lower of the two of white balances and it's the opposite with the numbers above. So I'm going to look at the first of the two numbers. I'm looking at the number for A. And when I go over to this brick, the one I want to match, and I just move around on top of it, I see that A varies from what? About upper fives to 6.3 that general range. When I move over here, I see that it's higher than that. It's about seven. So I'm going to use the down arrow key to get lower and I might not need to do all that much to it, just down to a teeny bit. And now I'm in the sixes up to the sevens. Well, then I'm going to click on the number that's above that, which is temperature. Temperature relates to the, under the histogram to the letter B. And I'll move over the area I want to match. And I see that in general, that number seems to vary on this brick in the upper eights into the lower nines. So I come over here and I see it's in the nines most of the time. It needs to go just a little bit lower. So I'll use my down arrow key. And now I'm pretty darn close. Uh, then once you get those numbers to be in the really close range, you're going to find these two areas are really close to matching. And now all I need to do is adjust the other bricks. So all I'm going to do is grab this tool and just start painting over the other bricks. I'm going to speed that process up because it's going to be kind of repetitive. So here goes. I'll stop whenever there's a good tip. When it comes to areas like over here that are in the shade, it might be too much of a change because this is already rather dark, but it might also look okay. If it seems to be too strong, then I would choose undo. And before painting, I would lower this setting called density. Density means how much of the adjustment do you want to be applied? 100% or maybe in this area more like 75 or 80% because it's already quite a bit darker. Then I can come across and paint across those. If you want to see before and after, you can come up to your mask here. And if you hover over its thumbnail first, you'll see the areas you've adjusted. And therefore, you can decide if you need to uh, paint on a larger area. Maybe you didn't get the corners of the bricks quite right. 
or maybe you got too much of the grout that's in between them, although maybe the grout should change as well. And remember, if you want that overlay to stay there, just type the letter O. O means overlay. And you can hold down the Option key, Alt and Windows, which means Erase. And I can come over here and get rid of any overspray that might be problematic. Although, if you don't notice it when you're not viewing the overlay, then you might not need to fix it. Uh, but I can come in here wherever I need to and clean it up. And if you want to see before and after, then if you turn off the overlay by typing O and you go to your mask on the right side is an eyeball. Just click and hold on it. You can see before, let go and you'll see after. Let's try one more spot. Sometimes you won't need to use the numbers, just the overall technique will be fine. This little brick here looks to be different than the color than the other two. So let's just come up here and say we want to use the brush and let's paint on that brick. There we go. And if you have auto mask turned on, it might help so that once it gets to the grout, it might not continue into that area. And again, you can hold down the option key to take away if necessary. But now I'm going to adjust it. The first thing I'm going to adjust is the brightness and I'm going to do that with a white slider. I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. Then another thing you can adjust other than just brightness, temperature and tint is saturation, which is how colorful it is. I might want to make that more colorful and even just doing that is making it look pretty darn close to matching. Now if I wanted to get it to precisely match though, that's when I want to get those LAB numbers to match. But in this case, I think it's close enough. So now that you know how to match two areas, if you want to learn how to apply those LAB numbers for other purposes like doing general color correction, then check out the video that's linked on the screen. Also, you can see two free videos that I record, one on luminosity masking and the other on transforming shady areas to looking like they're sunlit at the Photoshop Virtual Summit, which is a free event. Be sure to register using the link in the description below. I'm Ben Wilmore. I'll see you next time.